The Lego UCS Falcon is a remarkable build. But those of us who were kids in the late 70s grew to know the iconic ship as white. So I changed it. Also color corrected the interior. For some reason, Lego only gave us two completed rooms. But I wanted more. So, much more. At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have... Revenge. <laughs> Bring that beat back! Good job. Hello again, friends, and welcome back to Slim Bones Lego Star Wars channel. Last time, I went over the full underbelly details with you that were made to this color-corrected rebuild. The port side airlock passageway has been dressed up nicely and includes the viewing port through the floor. Credit goes to Lego Modder 38 for his research and idea for this modification. This is a comparison between Lego's build, the color corrected upgrade, and then the fully dressed versions. We see tiling, lights, and computer panels added. How the boarding ramp looks from the side. I have several sticker sheets left over from last year's Star Destroyer interior project, so they're being used when able. The 4x4 tile represents the elevating platform which leads to the top hatch, as seen in The Empire Strikes Back. Here are a few other images of add-ons to the airlock passageway rooms. I was mostly flying blind with these ideas, but I did add ladders, which is something I saw in the Brick Vault UCCS build. It's fun to come up with little decorative details. When the Phase 1 color correction build was done, these areas of the ship were already improved. Even more so now. In the official 75192 UCS Falcon instructions, Room 1 is one of the two unfinished rooms, but includes the hidden AX-108 ground buzzer blaster cannon. Unfortunately, I had to relocate the hidden cannon to the other side of room 1. Also needed to use a slightly shorter axle to mount it to, so it would then clear the above mounted 6x16 plate. It was very important to me to add a mock passageway coming from the cockpit. Sure, it doesn't actually connect to the cockpit, and the structure of the UCS build gets in the way of this flow, but I did my best with what I had to work with. Down the road, whenever I decide to tackle Phase 3 of this ongoing UCS Falcon project, the tunnel from the cockpit will flow better and have less restrictions. The new Room 1 is better and has a fully tiled black floor. Because the floor in the Falcon is black, not dark bluish gray. Hallway pieces turned out okay, and the area where the cannon is housed was a lot of fun to decorate. The ladder to the top and bottom turret stations is in a more accurate location as well, from the research I've done. The top turret station was once again improved. To more closely represent the version seen in the movies, the station is now completely surrounded by tiles and slopes with assorted computer-style patterns. Each one is different, and this was a fun little project to do. Let's talk about the cockpit. Yes, I know the coloring of the printed translucent 10x5x6 cone piece doesn't match very well after changing this build from light bluish gray to white. What I can tell you is that I did try to fix this. Both Tim from Kansas City, Missouri and the Brick Wiz 
used professional sticker companies to have that piece altered to better match their white falcons. The names of those companies are Ultimate Collector Stickers and OK Brickworks. I contacted both companies twice over the span of three weeks' time and never received a response. I even checked my junk mail just in case. While it would be great to have this done, I'm fine if it never happens. Having it done would break my rule of not using only legit Lego pieces, but we both know it would look a lot nicer. I rebuilt the cockpit with a better mixture of printed tiles, slopes, stickers, and round colored translucent pieces. I had a lot of fun remaking this classic image with minifigures. A little side note, since my first video on this channel, I've had an original 1977 Kenner 1000-piece puzzle of this image hanging on the wall in my Star Wars room. In 2021, shortly after my dad and I built the UCS Falcon set, I found a sealed and box copy of it on eBay. Not gonna lie, that puzzle took us just as long to build as it did the Lego set. Eight days. Room 2, otherwise known as the common area, or the Dejaric room, was only given a few changes. Most notably, the floor was completely tiled in black. Also, the width was increased by one more stud to allow for piping and a lever. Added the overhead bed as well. Kinda. I'm no longer using the 1x6x5 panels with doorway stickers. I like them, but they won't work with what I'm doing. Throughout this set, I'm not adding the top part of the circular hallways. In my opinion, there is no reason to do so since ceilings aren't part of the build. Also, the stickers show a gray floor and... Uh, the floor of the Falcon is black. Uniformity is key for a good looking interior. Since these hallways will be found in each of the four rooms, and so much of the interior can't actually connect with one another anyway, due to the spacing taken up with this set's frame, I'm using the color of black to represent the idea of being further down the hallway. In the previous video, I mentioned that there was much room for improvement here. There's never a reason to leave an area unpolished. There are four of these similar spots on the UCS Falcon that Lego did nothing with. And let's not even mention how disgusting they looked before I color corrected them. What a waste! So stupid. I already showed you what was done with the area near the cockpit. It's part of the mock passageway, and I put in some unique decorative pieces. I guess we can call this spot one of the cargo holds. The starboard side of the Falcon is looking so fine. I'm not sure what this room is supposed to be, but at least it isn't left blank and boring. This spot is where one of those top decorative pieces mounts. If you feel so inclined, give me a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Feedback in the comment section is always appreciated, and I'm more than happy to discuss things with you. Staying on the starboard side, we quickly recap room one then move on to room four. 
The rounded falcon passageway idea is continued into this room. Plenty of decorative pieces added, even in spaces that could have otherwise been left blank. We see the service access room, or the Han and Leia kissing room. A bed was added. And I'm happy to have the escape pod hatches towards the rear of the ship. It may look like a tight squeeze, but the hatch doors can open in this tight space. We move through the rounded corridor to room four. In my opinion, these hallways look pretty darn good. This idea was highly influenced by both of Locke's 75192 modification videos. I watched them over and over again and implemented those ideas into a design I liked. There is a standing computer station and pressure gauge. Also, a slightly larger and better looking smuggling compartment. We move on to the sublight engines, and I absolutely love this look. This was another addition stolen from LEGO Modder 38. The hyperdrive is amazing. This build is a mixture of his ideas and the UCCS brick vault model. Without a doubt, room three is my favorite of this interior. I'm so proud of it and thankful for all the ideas that were already out there. When my dad and I built the Lego Star Wars 75192 Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon over two years ago, I knew someday I would need to revisit the enormous model and make improvements. Since last December, I've spent many, many hours going over every nook and cranny of this monster of a set, and I made every adjustment I could think of to make the interior better, cleaner, perhaps even more accurate. I've learned a lot about this hobby over the last two and a half years, and it has, as always, been my absolute pleasure to offer you a piece of my creativity. As I mentioned before, if you have any questions about any of the changes and additions I've made to this model, or from any of my previous videos, leave a comment and I'll be happy to go over anything with you. My next video will be the final one for this Phase 2 project, the full tiling of the top of this model. See you next time on Slim Bones Lego Star Wars Channel.